and welcome to this tutorial on how to set up the tools for your offline defense. As with previous tutorials, what we'll have to do at the moment is go to our castle view by moving your mouse cursor down to the bottom right of the screen where it says to castle. Click on the icon, it'll bring up the castle view and when you see the castle you'll see that there are some additional icons now showing which include military and defences. If you clicked on the military and then defences it will then open up our defence settings and we can see here that we have one, two, three wall slots, three wall slots, two slots, one slot and the gate. And what essentially we're trying to do is put some tools on these slots and we can see below that we have pretty much some tools, defense rocks, tar pitch kettles, maturation, flaming arrows and bulwarks. It's fairly easy and simple and straightforward. Take the rocks, fence rocks, click on them, put them in a wall slot. Increase the count, ideally. It's nice if you can have about 12. And since our ratio in the previous tutorial on offline defense setup was 65-35 for our melee troops and ranged troops. It means that we'd use two of our slots for defense rocks. Defense rocks will take out troops um, that are melee. For the ranged troops, we'd like to use fire arrows or flaming arrows. And it's just a case of selecting those, putting those. Now, you'll notice also that our current offline defense setting is 0, 0, 100. So in actual fact, having defense rocks or anything on that left flank is pointless. The reason being is there are no troops to actually use it. So if we had a look at the left hand side, no defenders. So we don't even have to put tools on that side. Take them off. But our right side, where our deployment of soldiers along the wall is 100% for our offline defense, and if we click on the right flank, it'll stay up here. We can see these are the troops that we have. And this is the current percentages, that bonuses that we have on those troops. Now, we can put rocks in, type in 12, type in 12, and then put in some flaming arrows. Now, if we go to our right-hand side, what you'll notice is the defensive range soldiers has now increased to 180% and our defence for melee has increased to 159%. What was it before? Well, let's have a look. We'll take our defensive rocks away. And then we'll click back up here again. And we've got 159. Take away our flaming arrows. Now click on it. We can see the defense of range soldiers and melee soldiers and the wall protection has pretty much changed. By putting the rocks in, we'll change that to 12, 12, we'll leave that one out and put some arrows in, 12, go back up and we can see that we're now improved the defense for the range soldiers to 180 
and 159. So we've improved both um, ratios for those troops. Now in the offline defence settings, because we're only defending either the right flank or the left flank, the best type of tools that you can use are the ones that are most powerful. So when we have a look at the tools, we'll click on the little eye, we'll see that it gives a 25% bonus on the castle wall protection. That's for rocks. The next one up from that is tar pitch kettle. That's a ruby tool, which means that you have to pay for them with rubies. But that gives a 40% bonus for the wall on when it's used. And the last one is the maturation. That will give you a 50% bonus on the castle wall protection. Now maturations are only available when you have the armourer outside of your castle and he allows you to buy special armourer tools. But the maturation, as you can see, is a 50% and that is the strongest that you can get. Our recommendation is, where possible, when the armourer visits, take an opportunity, spend the rubies, put in some maturations, some fire slits for the arrows, and some fiery moats, if you have moats. At the moment we don't. So, it's just a simple matter of click on the item, and in our case, we want the best sort of items that we can have. So we'll put up, say at the moment, four. Remember I said to you, ideally you'd like to have 12 of each. We've got to wait for the next ruby sale, but we'll put four, four. And then, instead of the flaming arrows, we're going to put our fire slits. Now, going across to our right side of the wall again, those changes that we've made, the defence of the rain soldiers is now 225, and our wall protection is now up to 160. So that's all a bonus applied to our castle in its offline defence setting. Now obviously, if you get a situation where uh, you come back online and you're being attacked, you're free to go and change those as you wish. Generally, depending on your level and how strong your uh, settings are and your Castellan rating is, and remember, you'll see that your Castellan bonus effects are listed here. Depending on those settings, um, you may want to leave them alone if you've got a good lot of supporting people around you. And the biggest difference is the better and more strengthened your right flank is, the less chance of your opponent winning that particular flank. And if they don't win the flank, then they won't get the bonus points of going into the courtyard of 30%. And that's where the real battle ends up being fought, is in the courtyard. So all those troops that are sent to you uh, to support anything in a battle, will all end up in the courtyard. So reducing the uh, number of uh, attackers that can get to the courtyard is our first priority. And we can do that by defending just the one wall and ensuring that that defense on the one wall has, where possible, ruby tools. That's pretty much it for setting tools. Now, as I said, the ruby tools like maturation and the arrow slits are only available to be bought when the armourer is outside your castle. And as you'll see from here, at the moment we've got several guys sitting outside the castle. Eventually you'll have one that is the armourer 
and that will allow you to buy the tools that you need. That's it for using tools and settings in the offline defence.